Truly African. On October 7, Hamas gunmen launched an unprecedented assault on Israel from the Gaza Strip, killing more than 1,400 people and taking at least 239 hostages. Now, since then, Israel has been carrying out retaliatory strikes on Gaza, in which more than 8,000 people are said to have been killed. The situation remains highly complex with calls for diplomatic efforts to bring an end to the hostilities and address the underlying issues contributing to the conflict. Now, I have monitored with keen interest the interviews with the Israeli and Palestinian ambassadors in Ghana conducted by our sister stations to get both device, share their perspectives and defending the actions of their governments. Today's show will break down one of the world's longest running conflicts. By the time we are done with the show, you should have a full understanding of why the world is here with the situation in Gaza. My name is Harriet Nati. The show is Diplomatic Affairs. It's on your screens every Saturday between the hours of 4 to 5 o'clock p.m. We are also global via social media and Facebook. You can also catch up with us in over 40 African countries and in some parts of Europe. We will be talking about the conflict between Israel and Gaza with the help of an expert just to get a very good understanding of what is happening here. I will take a break when I come back. My guest is seated and we will delve right into our conversation for today's episode. My guest is Farouk Al-Wahab and he is an international diplomatic consultant. We are so privileged to have him sharing his views you know, professional views on the subject that borders around diplomacy and international relations. Farouk, welcome to Diplomatic Affairs. Thank you Thank so you. much for your time. Welcome. First off, how did we get here? Was the Israel-Palestine conflict about? Just help us to put things into perspective. Anyway, if anybody or any country should answer this question in a more of the understanding that you and the world wants to know. I think the British are supposed to be on the table to tell the world mm. how they got here, how we got here. Not me, not you. You understand me? Right. Primarily, until we got Israel as a state, the whole area had been what? Called Palestine. Until 1947, 1948, mm -hmm. Israel had been Judah, or Judea was the name. So the British, for them, giving them, call it the Israeli independence in 1948, was the change of an affair. Until then, I don't think there was any conflict to that extent. If even there were misunderstandings, mm. nevertheless, they've lived side by side. But I would just want to make it very clear for people who do not understand this story, it has been created the impression that it's Arab, Muslims, and then Christian Christians. War. But it is a fallacy, and it's a very funny tale if anybody would assume it's an Arab, uh, it's a Muslim Christianity. Who says how many Jewish are Christians? They are not up to even 200,000. They are not even 180,000 in the state of Israel. As compared to how many Arabs who are Christians, they are more than the Jewish Christians. Mm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And if you're talking about an issue of how many Palestine Arabs are in Israel, they are more than 2 million out of the 9 million Israeli population that they have. About 2 million of them are all Arabs, Palestine Arabs. 
who are also Christians. And then on the Palestine side, there are more Christians. The whole Palestine state, which is in dispute, whichever way that you see it, they are not more than up to 50% who are Muslims. They are multi. They are Christians and then also other, other Orthodox bodies. So let us clear the impression that it is not Arab, Christian, Muslim, and Christian, Christian war. war. It is not. It is purely an understanding of self-determination, statehood. This is my country. I want to be called Palestinian. I want to be called Israeli. Mm. Palestine is a country. Israel is a country. That is just as simple as A, B, C, D. Very simple. The world have gone through phases of war. The Cold War era, First World War, Second World War, etc. It was not just by accident where we begin or we had the United Nations. It was born out of wars. The Second World War. Then a the certain group of about 50 countries mm -hmm. gathered in San Francisco and said that, no, we have to put the world together. Let us have a resolution of peace, understanding borders, understanding statehood, who owns what and who owns where. At that time, there were a lot of ter territories that didn't have owner. Rather, a lot of territories were in the hands of superpowers, mm. like in the case of ours. Mm. That time, we didn't know anything called Ghana. Right. We're part of Gold Coast, British Overseas Territorial mm -hmm. Area, just like any other place. So when this UN in 1945 was put out there, was when all these countries, statehood, proper barrier, demarcation, frontiers, you understand, mm. start to prop up. So if the world had gone through such phases, then there's a clear understanding for one even to ask that the countries that were even much involved heavily in the Second World War called the Aziz powers. The Aziz power was the Nazi Germany, the fascist Italy, the imperial Japan, Ethiopia, etc. If the, 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 the Aziz powers that fought against the West, that fought against the UK, the France, and the other Western part of the world, today, if we're talking about who are friends of the West? Is Italy not part? Today, who are friends, are friends of the West? Is Japan not part? So we've gone through phases of hardship, difficulties, and fights. Now, isn't it interesting that even the Second World War, the Chinese today, that we see them as a communist, they were part of the Western powers. They fought alongside. They didn't fought, fight with the Nazi Germans. But the Italian did. Italian did. Japan fought for German Nazis. So how come at the turn of event, Japan is quiet and you and I see Japan? But that time it was imperial. They were imperialists. They were fighting against the West. China that supported the West against the Aziz power. In the end, in the end mm -hmm. Japan turned around, became friends of the other side after the Hiroshima and everything, and they started also unleashing bombs on China. What are we today? China had gone their way, they've had their statehood, they've understood themselves, they moved on economically, and here they are today. So as many other parts of the world. So the UK, that handed over, called it independent, or recognition of the statehood, or Israel, mm -hmm. makes it quite easier. At that time, they had the power and the chance in their hands to determine that, okay, that is Palestine state. Mm -hmm. This is Jewish state. Okay. That would have ended the Everything. whole matter today. But you recognize one as a state, and then you left the other one. So you left them. What was their identity? What was their nationality? What citizenship were they having? What recognition were they having? Mm -hmm. Right after that, 1948, when did the first Arab-Israeli war started? It was just right after, because a certain state had been created, so they have to assume power of authority on the others. But then if even that was the case, it brings out the reflection of Namibia that was also being hosted by South Africa under the apartheid as their country or the authority on them. Nevertheless, it got to a time when the black man took control of the South Africa mm -hmm. and abolished apartheid, mm. Namibia was also set free. Yeah. So therefore, it is not 
in doubt that Israelis could have understood and agree of the Western powers at that time because during this 1948, the Union, the, uh, the UN, was already formed. There was already a union, a UN existence. Mm. And then that Gladden, Sir Gladden Jeb, who was a British, the first acting of the UN for one good year, from 25 to 46, what did he do about it? What did he do about it? So, where we are today, it is just a matter. The Palestinians says they are Palestinians. They've lived side by side as brothers and sisters. With Israel. With Israel. And I've given you that Israel, around the world, their population is about 16 to 17 million. How many of them are in Israel? They are just about 9 million. Mm. The Palestinians, they are also about 16 to 17 million around the world. How many, how many of them in Palestine? Around 6 million. Where are the rest? On the part of the Palestine, mm. good number of them are in Chile. Mm. How did they end up in Chile? On the part of Israel, good number of them are where? From where? They are in America, France, Switzerland, other parts of the world. Why? Because they've also tasted, in the case of the Jewish or the Israelis, how difficult and how sad it is to be under somebody's control under the control of the German Nazis started or decided to wipe up the Israeli or the Jewish around the world. How different is it? So if you've gone through that transformation, mm -hmm. then I would say that historically, we've even had an Israeli prime minister mm -hmm. and the first of his kind in the world, who was a woman, who assumed the role, Golda Meir. Golda Meir was a Ukrainian. She wasn't Golda Meir. She was Golda Mabovich, born in Kiev, in Ukraine, by Ukrainian Jews. How did they, they end up, entered, how did they end up giving birth to somebody who later became a prime minister of Israel, and she was a, a Ukrainian citizen? I read that um, in 1947, I think this was just when the United Nations was born, that they, the UN adopted Resolution 181, which called for the partitioning of Palestine into Arab and Jewish states. But this was right after the Second World yes. War. But Palestine rejected this plan. Uh, they, they rejected the plan as what? How did they reject the plan? How long did it take for the fight to begin? You see, the UN proposal, partitioning, was that a dispute? It was not disputed. It is not true that it was disputed. It is not true that it was disputed. So call it even there was a dispute at that time mm -hmm. for lack of understanding, for lack of the fact that the whole area, the whole region was called Palestine. For lack of understanding, if they did not, we have lived through the processes. They've had the first Arab Israeli, where the Israel, what about Israel's uh, Israeli presence and occupation or Israeli's attack on Egypt, where they took the Mount Sinai and they took the, sorry, the, Sinai, the, Penin the, the Sinai Peninsula. Peninsula. Uh, Peninsula. Yeah. When they took the Sinai Peninsula, what happened? They forced Egypt to recognize them as a state before they give it back to them. Israel, Egypt did it, they gave it to back, back, back to them. So that was not an issue, it's one of the issues. Mm -hmm. The partitioning issue of the UN resolution, call it is one of the issues. But then I read, let's go back. That from that period, how many times have they fought? When the Palestinians decided to have a political structure, all the organizations that they established were branded from day one as terrorist group. The Palestine Islamic Jihad, the Hamas, and then Al Fatah. The Al Fatah was the one from Ye for Yasser Arafat. But then in the 80s, there was an establishment of a certain Hamas. And even the Hamas was against Ye Yasser Arafat for making peace, for establishing, and Yasser Arafat from day one agreed and understood that yes, there should be two states, Palestine state. And the PLO of Yasser Arafat mm -hmm. was not even formed by Yasser Arafat. Yasser Arafat movement was Al Fatah. The PLO was by the Arab countries. That they will establish the PLO in Kuwait, that they were all in support to help the Palestine to have their statehood. So it is not correct that anybody would say that it was rejected. At that they said Palestinian to have their statehood and uh, their statehood. It didn't say that they didn't want to recognize the existence of Israel. Palestine had never. 
they have never said they don't recognize the existence of Israel. Yes, from the organizational point of view, at the time of rebellion, at the time of terrorism, call it misunderstanding, yes, they all made speeches. Arafat at a point that he would not recognize Israel, but he was the first person to recognize Israel. But Hamas stand, and then Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the PIG, their stand was that for them, long as Israel does not recognize them, they don't want the existence of Israel in that region. And that was their view. But the world moved on and on until a certain time, from Ben Gurion's time of the prime ministership, until the fourth one, which is Golda Meir, Omet, whoever, all those who have come and left. Some of them tried to look for peace. Some of the prime ministers tried to negotiate peace. But then a certain Bill Clinton in 1994, John Major in 1994, a certain Yasser Arafat and a certain Ishak Rabin, didn't they conclude all this kind of, call it, crazy stuff that is going on? Where there was an establishment and a step signs an agreement that yes, Arafat says that the biggest political diplomatic handshake was 1994 Oslo Accord between Yeshak Arabin and Yes Arafat, who were not seen eye to eye. But in the end, they became the very good and very good parties and friends. Whereas on that very day, Yes Arafat recognized as a state called Israel, and then Rabin also in turn did the same thing. Allowing the first country, the first city that on that Oslo Accord that was recognized by Rabin was Jericho for the Palestines. It was perfectly agreed. So in 1995 was the backtrack of this issue where Bill Clinton expected. Yes, Arafat was alive. Rabin was alive. So it was in the process making sure there was a proper demarcation, mm. understanding the West Bank occupation by the Israelis, that is the Israeli, mm -hmm. and the Gaza, and etc. It would have all ended. So in the process, then a certain Ishak Rabin, such a nice man that they, the Jewish, or the Israelis, call him Din uh, 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 Rodev. So meaning that he was a pursuer of justice and the peace. How did they kill him? How did they kill him in 1995 in November? On the feet. I was in Israel that very day. I was in Tel Aviv, Takana Magazine. You were in the region. I was happened. not in the region. I was in Israel. In, in Israel, when yes, this happened. I was happened. in Tel Aviv when this happened. And look at the days that he was standing and then a campaign that Yegaramir, a young boy like that, could fire from where? In the midst of people, and nobody that was said than Ishak Rabin. Sent him to hospital for two, three days. Israeli conspiracy says that he even died before they took him out there. At that time, bearing in mind the Israel, the idea of Israel, Israeli Defense Force, what they've done at that time, forcing Arafat in the bunker and etc. Wasn't it so surprising that when even Ishak Rabin was pronounced dead, the first official statesman to have gone to visit the wife before Israel, as a government, as a country, sent delegation to, 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 to Mrs. Rabin, yes, Arafat was already sitting there. So what was the problem? They didn't have a problem to that extent, even at that time. So right after Arafat, uh, yeah, Rabin was killed in 1995, and a certain Perez came. Even Perez was not a conservative, because he had come before. So he understood. Rabin had come. So he understood. So all of them would have pushed the agenda of peace still, regardless. It took how many years for Arafat to die? Nine years. But then interestingly, Arafat was not married to an Arab or a Muslim. Arafat's wife was a, was, was a Christian. She was a Christian. So why is that beef that is like the world portrays the story mm. that is Arab Christians will know. There are more Christians in the Palestine more than the Jewish state or the Israeli state. So they are not fighting because of religion. They are fighting because of frontier demarcation, demarcation. and recognition. What is called the self-determination. But then, quick to say that Israel in their history from 1948 up to today, they've had how many prime ministers? 
are sent to be corrected. There are about 14 to 15 or 14 prime ministers. How many of them had come back to back? Perez had come twice. Rabin came. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. Ben Giron, the first one, he came twice. Godamaya had only one chance. A lot of them. But if you date back from the time that Perez was ousted from office by Bibi Netanyahu, all the efforts made, I call it by the West, I call it by the UN, mm -hmm. during Kofi Annan's time, what happened? The whole thing was brought down to the ground. The whole thing was brought down to the ground. I don't want to look at what happened in 1948. If we have to talk about 1945, like you're talking, mm. the first UN, blah, blah, blah. Then, in fact, UN had supervised and allowed a lot of countries of the world today to have a unilateral way of doing things without even respect for the UN itself. It's a weak organization of the world. You can say that. Well, I will tell even the commissioner who is in charge, the UN rep in Ghana here, and look at his face and tell him that he's a commissioner. Unfortunately, yes. Farouk, we do admit that the United Nations yes. is faced with enormous challenges. Yes, what, what, but what even the, despite the all the challenges, yes, they've done we have the United Nations Security Council. And what has the council done? So oh, far in this yes. issue, we haven't had much from the UNSC. Yes, the Security Council, what, who are they to talk? What are they going to talk about? What do they have to say? We've always had the UN Security Council. The permanent members were five. The United Kingdom, called the UKs, the France, the America, and then the Russia, and then also the Chinese. What UN Security Council themselves, what have they done on the council? Your country, Ghana, was a, 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 was the chair of UN Security Council. When they talked about Arab, Israeli, Palestine issue, Ghana, Ghana government was protested. They protested, Israeli strongly protested. So let us not deal with the issue of UN Security Council because we are talking about a statehood. If we are to talk about the statehood and we're delving into that, I just want to say that has UN, whether or not as a body, established that today we stamp on the authority, I'm referring to the Security Council, mm. that Palestine is a country, is a state, this is their airport, this is their port. Now, if you even call it an inland, but of course, they have the eastern belts, the eastern, eastern Mediterranean there, so they can have a port on their own. So, if even it were to be an inland bound, I get me mm -hmm. like Burkina, like Mali that hasn't got port, they could still have countries that they have to, they don't have to resort to maybe Israel and then security, etc. Et but the UN Security Council itself, I'm just putting it back and asking them when the Indonesians were disturbing the East Timus. Wasn't the same UN the Security Council that forced the East Timorese needed to have a country on their own? And the UN supervised, sent UN army to go and force and help for law and order and the establishment of East Imo becoming a country. What is the size of the East Timorese population? Is it up to 1.5 million? Is a country. What is the size of Jamaica? Their population is up to 1.4, it's a country. What is the size of Barbados? Their population is not to 1 million, it's a country. What is the size of Trinidad and Tobago? What is the size of Tex and Caicos? What is the size of Nevis and St. Vincent? What is the size of uh, uh, Dominica Republic? What is their population? Then let's go to the Pacific. The Pacific states. Tonga Island, how many are they? Are they up to 20,000? It's not a country with flag. Established, recognized, they sit at UN General Assembly. Vanuatu, they are 300,000. Nauru Island, they are 12,000. Solomon Island, they are they up to 15,000. It's a country. New Caledonia, what is their size? Kiribati, what is their size? Tahiti, what is their, is their size? Micronesia and Polynesia regions, what is the size box altogether? Don't they have flags like you see the flag? Go to UN General Assembly, their flags are hanging there. They are recognized. So if they are recognized, and we have a country that population is 12,000. How do you not, the same UN with your general security, your UN Security Council, could not stamp on the authority and say that this is a population of about 19, almost 16 million conservative calculations. There will be about 20 million Palestinians scattered around the world. And you don't want to give them a country? Where is the UN that you are talking about in that 19th? They brought about this and then there was and the Palestinians rejected. Let's not talk about history. If we have to talk about that history then, then we are saying that today, British will come and take Ghana army and go to Burma war, Sagranti war, what and what war. Are you saying there is the lack of political will on the side of the United Nations? It is Nations? the fact that the United Nations, it is, they use certain countries for bargaining chip. 
because whereas other countries have the right and the power and i'm referring to the united states of america the united kingdom etc they have the exercise they have the power to exercise in other countries free as they want it but others do not have because one international territories and invasion israel on the golan heights israel in lebanon when yes arafat at the time had the plu and he went Israel were chasing him and he went to Lebanon. Israel were able to do ground strike, entered with their uniform and went to Lebanon to chase them out. The UN was existing. They didn't talk that you were not even allowed with the UN under the charter, either the Vienna Convention, either the Swiss Convention or the New York Convention. None of them gave the right for any country to wear your uniform or to use your military arsenals and cross over without subject to UN's uh, uh, approval. But Israel did it. What happened? When Yasser Arafat was struck, they struck him in, in Lebanon. He left and came to Tunisia. Hammam shot. 1985, what happened? IDF, intelligence, Israel, they went to Hammam shot and bombarded uh, 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 Tunisia. Was that allowed? Did you want to speak? How does a country also move from other territory when you're in the air? If you're using, chasing your Sarafat, he was in somebody's country. There were citizens of Tunisia living in Hammam shot, living in Hammamif, Hammamlif, living in Hammamet. Was that allowed? Justified? But they did it. They did it. So, you see, is it possible today that Ghana will just get up and say that Togo, Lume, part of it is ours. We are invading Lume. That brings us to the ECOWAS story, the story that I did with you, when I told that, that you cannot just take, choose and pick which one you feel is right and which one that is wrong. And that is what the UN and the weaknesses of the UN and then the hypocrisy of the UN, that makes it disrespected by other countries that they feel that UN is nothing to them. But the United Nations... Let it exist in flags. UN has flags. The existence of UN, we've had 10 UN Secretary Generals. The first one, Gordon Jeb, he was just only a caretaker. He was not confirmed. But then it started with lie. Uh, 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 what was the name? Yes, lie. And then Yutant came. Hamas Jot came. And then... Uh, what's the name of uh, the Austrian? Um, Kudvaitam, being the third. From Kudvaitam, Paris de Koya, Kofi Annan, Ban Ki-moon, Gotares. Tell me all these ten men. Are you telling me that they don't have, or they didn't have the power, they didn't know diplomacy, they didn't have the courage, or they didn't know the UN functions to make sure that a certain existing issue, which is as old as the existence of the UN, and they could solve it? They could solve it. How was Ban Ki Moon? How was he voted no of no, a vote of no confidence? Did he resign? No, he didn't resign. Did he end up his tenure? No. no. You want to come and explain to you and explain to me why Ban Ki Moon and what country silent Ban Ki Moon? It was United States, United Kingdom, and France. What did he do? They brought Mr. Kofi Annan. At the end of his tenure, Kofi Annan became even 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 ineffective. Because there were certain things that he was not even, uh, he didn't understand or he didn't want to agree. The state order, the, like, let me call it the world order. So that brought about the issue when this Iraq issue that his son was involved in an uh, uh, oil for food program. That discredited Mr. Annan upon all the very good diplomacy that he did. He, he ended up the outstanding diplomacy. He ended up the Israeli war. He finished it up nearly. Because Ban Ki Moon now, uh, uh, Butros Butros Ghali, who was seen as pro-Arab. That is why they voted him out. Butros Ghali, I'm sorry, was the one I was referring to, not Ban Ki-moon, Butros Ghali. After Paris de Koya, they sacked him. And Kofi Annan had two terms, eight years solid, 10 years or eight years solid. What happened to him? You understand? So from Kofi Annan, Ban Ki-moon, and then Guterres, and then look at always the shift, the US presidents that have come and left. Clinton with Kofi Annan, Bush came to do with, uh, with uh, how do we call it, um, Ban Ki-moon, okay? Bush, Trump, yeah, Trump met, met Ban Ki-moon. Some of them somehow, the U.S. presidents, somebody like Trump, he said, oh, no, America was not going to commit all her resources, etc., into that, and this issue should be dealt with at a diplomatic level. What about Obama? 
Obama was very straight on the subject that the same way that the Israelis sees their kids going to school without any military presence, he expects that the Israelis must also accept the Arab kids are also living in trauma, etc. He was very clear, and st clear on the point. So what has changed with the US, U.S. foreign policy? Was that then the same U.S. policy, the foreign policy that Clinton used to resolve the issue? Was that the same U.S. foreign policy that Bush somehow didn't attend the topic or didn't treat that topic, but he was a little bit, he left it open. So let's say that Bibi Netanyahu, who has had the third, third times in the history of Israel, being the only prime minister who had come back to back, back to back, back to back, three times, all in the good name of using Palestine as a, as a, as a tool to keep his political aspirations and political disbursement, Whenever any existing U.S. president was against Bibi Netanyahu, he had a very a, a, a rift with them. He had a rift, serious one with Obama. He had a serious rift with Trump because he didn't have his way. Meanwhile, he had to associate this affection by the Israelis because of his problem that he had. So you're saying the non-declaration of Palestine as a state benefits the United States? They, they, they should, they, the Americans should, they, I'm not saying that for them, but the Americans should tell me why they insisted on and make sure they were power players and support of South Sudan. America did a lot and helped the world. That the, what Omar Bashir, because at that time a certain Omar Bashir had been declared wanted. So the South Sudan claiming to be and uh, have a self-determination, the same issue of statehood. America was a bigger player, supported with money, logistics, intelligence, and everything. So if America supported for a statehood, a state to be made, called the youngest African nation, called South Sudan, what is the difficulty that America cannot stamp on the authority and make sure that a recognition, a declaration, both the UN, United States to recognize Israeli stay. Palestine is a country. Let us see the world order. How crucial is the role of the United States in resolving this crisis? Amer Listen, America always says that we stand by Israel. There is no country in the world that Israel respects except the United States. Therefore, ask yourself, not the UN General Secretary or the UN Secretary General. Without the American president, nobody can solve this issue of the world. And then where is the American interest? It has to do with the American president, whether it's a Republican or whether it's a Democrat. Each of them comes with a different feeling, with different approach, and how they see it. Ancestrally, how they also connect, and some of them knows their background. So each one of them comes with a different feeling. But I'm saying that it has not to do with somebody's emotions. We're talking about diplomacy is not about somebody's emotions. Diplomacy is about reality. But even when you cannot voice where you stand, in diplomacy, you have to keep quiet if you don't have anywhere that you belong to. That is the intelligent diplomacy. Now let's talk about if it bothers what is happening in Israel now, borders on genocide or is it close to genocide or what kind of it it is because listen we have military uh, uh, operations israel i must say and i must confess is the most intelligent military mm. in the world regardless of the size quote me intelligence no country comes closer to israeli idf operations they've done successful operations didn't they come to to to, to Entebbe? the Entebbe raid Go and research as a journalist. What did Israeli do to uh, Idi Amin to, to take off the hostage from Entebbe Airport in Kampala? I will that get was, all the information. That, that was made possible. If that was made possible, do you know the number of raids Israelis have done? Were they not in Dubai? Were Israelis not in Dubai? What are you hunt, saying? To hunt. That Israel so, could have easily located yeah, Hamas, no, but Hamas is in Gaza. without having to kill Hamas, civilians, children Hamas and is in women. Gaza. Israeli jail, how many Hamas are sitting there? How many PLO since yesterday have had time? How many Fatah movement members are sitting in Israeli jail? How many of them of the Palestinian Israel, uh, Islamic jihadists are sitting in Israeli jails? So if it was an oppression, me, I would never have anything to say about this. What do you think it is? Bibi Netanyahu's own word. He said, I must finish the business. He's going to wipe Palestine. He didn't say he's going to wipe Hamas. And I'm saying that Israel has the capacity to know the rooms, individual rooms and households where Hamas members. How many, what's the size of Hamas members? One would say yes. that Israel was provoked by Hamas. Nigeria has Boko Haram. 
they went to do some funny things in the north of Cameroon. Garwa, Marwa, Mundu, Gandere, they went to the bush to do nonsense. Cameroonian government attacked Boko Haram on the frontier. They didn't come to Lagos to bombard. Bear in mind, what is the size of the Hamas organization? And then the president, as Obama said, that Bibi Netanyahu should put himself in the shoes of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of uh, Mahmoud Abbas. That if he, Bibi Netanyahu was the president in, her, in Palestine, authority of the state Palestine, how would he have felt? So a certain organization, a certain bad boys, a certain bandits, a certain jihadist, mm. a certain criminals come to unleash, come to do something in another country, and you are going after them. Therefore, hospitals, buildings, everybody, not thinking of even the POWs, the prisoners of war, when caught alive, must be under the UN Charter, must be respected. But then if kids are in the hospital, and you have to throw bombs, or in the good name that you're looking for Hamas. How do you look for the Hamas? Then go and break down the old Jerusalem. Break down the Jericho. Because the Hamas people are also in Jericho. Maybe, who knows? Why are they not going to wear Jesus Christ, the thumb, and everything? Let's see what will happen in the world if they are going to break Jericho, Jerusalem, the old Jerusalem. Why are they not going to that side? Because that area is led by the Palestinians. It's also part of the Palestinian territory. Both states have breached international law. What is the way forward? The way forward is that if UN would recognize that there is an organization that all of us subscribe to diplomatically, cry to diplomatically, and use the same existing laws. Let me tell you, use the same existing laws that indicted Radko Mladic, that indicted Radovan Kar Karadzic, that indicted Slobodan Milosevic, that they also caused atrocities by throwing bombs and killing innocent. That is, they were innocent children. They were brought to the Hague, imprisoned them, and they died. What happened to Laurent Babo? He killed 21 sp people. He went for 10 years jail. Where is Charles Taylor? He's in jail because of what? Is that not the same atrocities? So is it right? When is Bibi Nyatenyo who did it? Or who does it? That one, there's no problem. But if it is, if it is maybe me or you or any other president, now giving you, what happened during the Yugoslavia breakaway republic uh, uh, fights? Slobodan Milosevic, who was the leader of, of 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 Serbia, because of things that he did, what happened? They indicted him. What happened to Omar Bashir until he was ousted from press, uh, from, from office? He has been indicted. That anywhere still, the UN is looking for him to arrest him. What about uh, Putin? Is that not the same thing? That they have indicted him that he used to be arrested. So I'm asking, where do we strike the healthy balance? Diplomatically healthy balance. And where do we say that somebody has called genocide? And somebody has called what a comfortable genocide? And the other one is also pursuing an agenda of truth or agenda of what? Is that where the UN is confused about? And they've closed down the chapter and the pages, turn upside down when it's about this country, when it's about that country. What is not right is never right. Honduras president, his brother was caught by the United States of America dealing in drugs. Something United States viewed it, it affected them. The brother was still a president. They arrested the brother and kept him in U.S. jail. The day his brother finished the tenure of his office, America went in with a special operation. They didn't go and kill the whole Honduras and brought him. He's in American jail. A president, American is holding him now as a jailbird. Did they break anything in Honduras? Did they kill any human being? Did they break buildings? Did they build, break the government building? They waited for him to finish his term of office as a president. So I'm saying that Israel, the country Israel, they are well expertised in operations than any other country, not even the United States Army, not the British Army Royal, not the French Army, who are good only in ground troops. Grand fight. Israel fights on the ground. They fight in the air. They fight in the ocean. They fight everywhere. Because this is a country that took three countries, fought with Syria, and then fought with, with Israel, uh, Egypt, and then the Palestine, and won. Are they not still celebrating the Yom Kippur uh, 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 success or victory of Yom Kippur, which is called the Ramadan War? Are they not still celebrating the Ramadan? Baruch, war? Israel and the United Nations are locked in a bitter spat after the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Tuesday night yes. said that the Hamas attacks on October 7th did not happen in a vacuum. Obviously, 
the Israelis were not happy with this. Yes. I mean, the Israeli Foreign Affairs Minister yes. has expressed his displeasure at this comment. Always is like and that. And of course, we've had the rep at the United Nations also expressing his displeasure at this comment. Yes. To the extent that Israel has decided to place sanctions on the United Nations. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> Listen to me. You see, these are what we call it diplomatic gymnastics. You understand me? We call it diplomatic gymnastics. It's a funny, it's a funny tale. Now, Israel stands. 186 member country board called the United Nations. And a smaller nation, not a bigger nation, where Ghana is even bigger than Israel, stands on the face of the UN and tell the UN that I'll sanction you. Why would they sanction? They'll sanction them and close down the UN offices in Israel, or they will not allow any Israeli, any UN personnel to step on the land of Israel. That is possible. Is that not right? When Iraq entered Kuwait, it took no more than how many hours, seconds, days that America intervened. Even at that time, there was what was called a unilateral decision which America tabled. They didn't even wait for UN to take action. But America was already on the air that they would not allow Saddam Hussein to invade. Did America not go to the re rescue of Kuwait? Are American Arabs, are they Muslims? Why did they go to, 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 to uh, uh, Kuwait to rescue Iraq, uh, to, how do you call it, Kuwaitis from the Iraq invasion? How did they do that? They did that. So you see, it is, you don't choose and pick. Guterres, he has said what he, was, he, he says. But at the end of the day, he represents the United Nations General Assembly. Right. The biggest Australia, the biggest demonstration in the life of Australia was taken last week against the same thing. Are Australians Arabs? No, they are not Arabs. Are they not English? Yes, they are English. What about UK? What is UK government saying about this? Because they caused the whole mess. What have they said about this? It is not a matter of Oslo Accord anymore. Which country is even going to host them? Are you hosting? Um, which is it? The funny thing is that I'm saying to Israel, you are not fighting with a country. You are fighting with an organization. So how do you fight with an organization with your might? Whereas you know there are people involved living on that land. Hamas is an organization. If you say that even they control Gaza, they control Gaza. Mm -hmm. Gaza is not for Hamas. And the Palestinians have come forward to say that even they themselves, Hamas fought with PLO. Hamas wanted to kill Yasser Arafat. What about that one? Hamas had tried to kill uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas. Israel is aware. Is Hamas a terrorist group? You brand it whatever that it is. I don't believe whether... We've had so many global leaders. Listen, the global leaders, listen, let me tell you. ANC, African National Congress, Nelson Mandela was branded terrorist. Say yes. When I do give you the roll call, <laughs> but when I mention, just respond, say yes. It was a mere political organization that were looking for end of apartheid. Mandela, he used even Ghana passport. Susulu, Wata Susulu, he used Ghana passport to enable him to move. Are you getting Oliver Tambo, Maria Makiba, all of them, they were branded terrorists. At the end of the day, ANC was not terrorists. Let's go to Mozambique. Samora Machel, fighting for freedom. He was branded terrorist. In the end, they killed him. Let's talk about Namibia, Swapo, Sam Nojuma, who was branded terrorist because he was looking for liberation of his country. What about Congo? What about UGCC, uh, uh, Kwame Nkrumah? Were they, was he not branded as a terrorist? So any organization in the mind of those whom it affects, that the world don't want to see certain countries to be liberated. Benuenda, West Papua, the only country in the world of black man's race who has, whose population is bigger than almost all the islands in South Pacific is having an interim presidency. I serve more or less as his advisor. He sits in UK as a president of the West Papua regime. UK understands the feeling of this. So if Benwanda to the Indonesians, they branded him as terrorist, and then the West, South Africa, branded Nelson Mandela as terrorist, was he a terrorist? Was Mandela a terrorist? So you see, liberation, and then also you're talking about self-determination, mm. and then statehood, they are different things. Whichever approach, yes, if Hamas goes to Israel and commit nonsense and mm. do anything, me, I, I, I allow. Why? The Israelis also have the, the right to leave. 
So if you come and kill them, they can also, but I'm saying that Israel can attack Hamas. They can arrest Hamas. They've done several operations, but you don't go ahead to declare war. Russia, Ukraine. That is how it started. When did the Donbass region? The Russians started what is called military operation in, 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 in Crimea. They started military operation. The world did not exercise and use the diplomatic corridor to solve the problem. Then Russia elevated from the operation to invasion. When they did the invasion, the world was quiet. At that time, even when Zelensky was prepared for them to make a peace, Boris Johnson, a certain Boris Johnson said they don't agree. It was after which that Russia went now into war. Israel didn't do operation as they normally used to do. The day that there was a strike, suspectingly, or whatever the Bahamas, kidnapping and kept i don't support that hamas should go and keep kidnap in israel they also have a right to leave so israel knows where the hamas authority where the members are did they not say that they have killed the hamas leader yeah the head of intelligence how did they know he was in that building so if you they knew as i've told you already israel go and check how many operations have they conducted in saudi Arabia, in, 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 in 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 dubai and arrested people that they were chasing for Israel, when Gaddafi in Mosarata in Israel, in, 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 in Libya, tried to build up a nuclear weapon, nuclear arsenal, in Mosarata bunker, in underground, Israel went to destroy it more than five times. They entered Libya and nobody saw them. They destroyed it. Quote me. In the, in the, in the, in the, in the late 80s, 1988, they went there to destroy it. Is there anything Israel cannot do with the intelligence or the IDF? Cannot, they can come and invade Ghana, successful operation and go quietly. So BB Netanyahu should not use the Palestine people or call the Arab Palestine, not forgetting that the people you are killing, your population, two million are them. Does it make normal sense? Two million Palestine Arabs are part of Israeli Jewish population who are called Israelis, holding Israeli passport, and the Arabs, and these are their family. By mere border demarcation, that's it. So Nippon need common sense and we think that border separates have we fought with Lome? When there's a funeral at Aflao, Lome people come. When there's a funeral at Lome, Aflao people go. Is that not the same family? Have they cut their throat? Farouk, from all indications, I can say from the a few observations that I am, you know, making when it comes to the role of the United Nations, that the United Nations General Assembly adopts resolution on the protection of civilians and upholding legal and humanitarian obligations um, on the ongoing yes. crisis in, in Ghana. So, so I mean, we had four. 120 countries against we had 14 and abstain we had 45 thank you so 120 in support of what the united nations is saying then they should adopt and go and arrest bb benyatanyahu for genocide. how long does it take for this to be implemented <laughs> you went you went you went charter you went declarations i should rather ask how many of them have been implemented Farid, what would we go from here where we go from here well, is that who are the best negotiators the best negotiator there's no country than united states and america has moving the biggest arsenals since two uh, since since independent uh, since the uh, second world war Gerard our fought the carrier about five of them to the region to block off what does it mean it's like yes yes we fended off let's see iran let's see uh, how do we call uh, Syria? Let's see Lebanon. Now, okay, Saudi Arabia, who wants to come? We are here. And then Israel is on their back. And that is what is going on. So if you ask me what it is, America should rather go the other side and block up because that is not the first time the United States have done that. Defending a country like Haiti. You remember the story of 1993, Barrett arrested. Clinton moving. The rebels. So if America has that history of stopping atrocities in other country, how is the same American country that we are coming to support and defend so that no country can come attack Israel? That is where we are. We could, the world cannot choose and pick by the world order. That when it's here, it's good. When it's there, it's right. If it's diplomacy, let it be on the table. Let's strike it out. But now who calls? Antonio Guterres. I feel so sorry for him because he's leading an organization that has math stripped. That evening, um, Israel tells you that we'll sanction you, meaning that they will sanction the Secretary General. Is that possible? No. Is Israel not a member of the UN General Assembly? Yes. So how does a member country 
if it was Togo president, if it was Ghana president, if it was Benin president, if it was Madebu, if it is Abaro, who had told you and Secretary General that I will sanction you, do you know what would have heard? It would have been unheard of. It is unfair. The justice of the world, mm -hmm. based on diplomacy, must be fairly shared if we are all we, we all subscribe to the declarations and the charter that we made so far. Nobody supports anything. Nobody supports any. I don't support whatever Hamas da does. But I'm saying that Hamas themselves are against the Palestinian state. It is on record. So if they've gone to, 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 to hit Israel, Israel must go after Hamas, not to kill the entire Palestine. Because at the end of the day, why don't they? They are not attacking Hebron because they are Jewish in Hebron, who are Arab Jews. Why are they not talking, uh, attacking Jericho? Jericho is not Palestine. Go and then check. Well, you understand? You understand? Jerusalem, old Jerusalem, when entering the old Jerusalem, the last building mm. is Queen of Sheba, the Ethiopian house. You cross the strip, you enter there. Is that time not Palestine? The al aqsa Mosque area, is that not Palestine? Why Israel is not breaking that side? But then on the West Bank, Ramallah, Gaza. It doesn't make any realistic sense. Farouk Al-Wahab is an international diplomatic consultant and he has been our guest on today's episode of the Diplomatic Affairs TV show coming your way every Saturday on Pan-African Television. The focus has been on Israel and Palestine conflict, ongoing conflict, and we are looking at ways of ensuring that peace is restored between these two states. So it's been very nice having you on the show as always thank you so much for your insights your expertise and of course your knowledge i think you've been well briefed and at this time yes this is the only platform that has all the people who understand the issues to update you inform you and also educate you my name is harriet nati i look forward to seeing you same time next week enjoy the rest of our programs